Stuart Models beam engine rebuild. This is part 13, fitting the Watts parallel motion and looking at the beam alignment. But first, what is Watts parallel motion and what does it do? Well, basically, it keeps the piston rod in line with the beam, because the end of the beam describes an arc as it moves, yet the piston just goes up and down in a fixed position. And the Watts parallel motion, which is a collection of eight rods, is fiendishly clever if you look into it. For me though, fitting Watts parallel motion is often a problem, it's a little bit like wrestling an octopus. The first thing I have to do is dismantle the parallel motion so that I can fit this part to the top of the piston rod. When I try it in position, I realise it needs a nut underneath it, so here's the nut going in place. This is a lock nut which will stop the piston rod from coming loose. Even this is quite a fiddly job, but the real fiddly job is yet to come. I have a problem with things if they won't keep still. And no, this is not a prelude to a girlfriend joke. If parts move around, I really struggle with it. If they stay still, then all is well. If I put a piece of metal in the chuck of the lathe, well yes, that is moving, but I don't mean moving like that. Let me give you an example. Wrapping Christmas presents. I don't know why it is, I can make models okay, model aircraft, model steam engines, model anything. But ask me to cut a piece of wrapping paper to put round a present, and A, I will probably cut it too short. People often laugh at the presents that I give them if I've wrapped them. If the paper and the present both kept still, then it would be okay, but they don't, they move around pretty much like this watch parallel motion. It really is like trying to wrestle an octopus. I used to have a special video tripod called a Benbo, and these tripods allow you to position the camera anywhere you like. And being a tripod that only had three legs, this is a piece of watch parallel motion and it has eight. Watching the video you would think, well, what am I on about? Because obviously I took this watch parallel motion off the engine to start with. Why didn't I just fit it as I found it? Well, well I did. But I find it a really fiddly job. Anyway, that's enough of my excuses. On with the job. I'm now assembling the watch parallel motion on the engine. The two outermost arms fastened to the entablature. As you can see, I'm fitting the first one on the left-hand side. The pin that holds the arm to the entablature has a spacer on it and a nut that fits on the other end to tighten it in place. I did drop the spacer on the floor a couple of times, but eventually it was OK. Here's the other side, same arrangement, and I noticed that the gunmetal bearing bracket is a bit loose. I'll tighten that up later. In fact, it's probably a good idea to tighten the bearing now. But unfortunately, the size of the bolt heads are smaller than my little socket thingy. It's just spinning round, so we'll do it later. I'll use a small spanner. For now, though, I'll continue fitting the outer arm of the watch parallel motion to this side as well. Where's the nut? Ah, here it is. And the nut is the wrong type. It's a bit thin. The thinner nuts like this are normally used as lock nuts, but sometimes they can look good on models because they're physically smaller. Thinner nuts are particularly useful for securing parts where there isn't much room. For instance, at both ends of the pin, which goes through the fitting on the piston rod, because there isn't much clearance between the part that goes up and down and the parts that are stationary in the gunmetal bearing blocks on the entablature. Whoever built this engine in the first place made a good job of the Watts parallel motion. It's very well made and the motion pins are a very good fit. I am, however, about to come across a problem that I've been aware of all the way along. I don't have a drawing for this engine, and I think the beam from side to side has been machined a little bit on the thin side. The beam itself is the same thickness as the fitting on top of the piston rod, and I'm sure the beam needs to be a bit wider at the top, and the bottom, and the ends. I can be quite smug and say that I saw this before I even started the series, that's why I thought it would make quite an interesting video series. I'm very concerned about the alignment of this beam, and the more I put the watts parallel motion together, the more I think it's not going to work. In this clip I'm putting the watts parallel motion together wrong, just out of interest to see whether it works or not. And it doesn't. If I put any spacers in at this point, then what's going to happen is as the piston rod goes up and down, there's going to be a collision between the inner and outer pins. At this stage a schematic would be useful because, to be honest, I'm starting to lose the plot. It's Christmas Eve 2019 and my thoughts are elsewhere. What I need is a reference model, and luckily, here's one I prepared earlier. This beam engine was left for repair a few years ago by a customer, but owing to the time and cost of repairing it, it's an impractical proposition. 
As you can clearly see though, the beam is a lot thicker and the watt's parallel motion has spaces at various points. Also the main bearings are in the correct position and made from gunmetal. Because the main bearings on the column are not in the correct position, the beam isn't in the correct position. So now I think I know how the base got broken in the first place. If you've watched the series, you will realise that the base was badly damaged. This was probably caused by the builder throwing the entire engine across the workshop. Here's an extract from part one, and as you can see, everything moves okay. But I'm not happy with the misalignment of the beam and the bearings. I'm going to put this right, I think, in a future episode. As I frequently say, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.